Hi, and welcome back to Leslie's Lab. In this episode, we're going to take a look at making our own fonts for the Raspberry Pi Pico display. So let's stick this on the bench and take a look. So this is the Raspberry Pi Pico uh, with the Raspberry Pi Pico display from Pi Maroni. Um, the display itself is really, really nice. It's a little uh, IPS display, absolutely fantastic. Um, when I got this, the sort of intent, well, well on a, if I'm honest, when I got this, I was just like, oh, a Raspberry Pi Pico, let's buy one, right? Um, but then I'm like, well, you know, what kind of projects can I use this for? And I'm thinking, you know, use it as a little microcontroller for maybe controlling uh, dye lasers or nitrogen lasers or something cool like that, right? Um, it's got a really nice dis display. The only sort of issue I had was these uh, fonts. I mean, it's readable, um, but honestly, um, I think it could be a little bit better. If I look at the code um, for um, this particular program, uh, I have it here on my screen. Uh, this is one of the default uh, pieces of code that you can pull down from um, Pimeroni's uh, GitHub. Uh, and if we scoot through, we can see like it's got button B pressed, button X pressed, and we're doing display.text and then, you know, putting in um, our text and then we're presumably putting in like the position and size uh, and so forth. Um, unfortunately, you can, you can sort of see on here that they're putting in lowercase text, but we've only got uppercase um, on the screen. So it looks like in the UF2 file, um, it only has compiled fonts that are just uh, uppercase. And I wasn't really particularly happy with this. Um, so I've put together something of my own. So if we go and have a look on uh, my GitHub, um, I've just released this uh, repository. It's the usual, um, it's all open source um, Apache license. Um, so it says fonts for the Raspberry Pi, uh, Raspberry Pico display. And um, what is it? It says it's new font uh, for the Raspberry Pi Pico display from Pi Maroni. And there's a link to uh, Pi Maroni. Uh, once again, not affiliated with these guys, but it's a cool product. So let's do cool stuff. Um, yeah, so there's an example of my, uh, of, of their original font. Um, not very exciting. Um, so anyway, so I've, I've written my own. Now, I've written this in pure Python. I didn't want to start faffing around with the UF2 file. And my suspicion is that a lot of people probably don't want to go messing around, you know, getting the, the dev kit together and sort of recompiling firmware, right? Um, so I'm just using the stock Pimeroni uh, firmware. And I've written the whole thing in Python, um, which will do some really, really wonderful little um, ASCII fonts. Um, two sizes. I've got absolutely minuscule, like Pico size fonts, and then some like, larger, brighter fonts. Um, so, without further ado, let's let's come away from GitHub. We can talk about the code later on. Um, let's go into Thony, and I will open the stuff that I've already um, uploaded to uh, the device. All right. So I want uh, PicoFonts.py. Um, so this is the code. Um, we'll just run it to begin with. Let's let's just go right ahead and run it. And we should be able to see it printing the very, very tiny fonts to the screen. Um, yeah, perfect. Should be able to see that just fine. Um, I've also done a little spinner because why not animate some ASCII text, right? Um, but the whole, the whole purpose of this little demonstration is to say, well, we can print whatever we like in a nice little readable font. Um, I've drawn a little spinner on the end there. Um, cool. Um, let's let's scoot through the code real quick. Um, I'm going to go from top to bottom. Uh, it's got the usual in the in the sort of top, in the comments at the top. There we've got fonts for the Pico display. Uh, me. Uh, this is the usual setup from the Pi Maroni uh, website. If you take a look at their firmware, this is how you initialize the screen. Um, then, just like the good old days, um, we have an ASCII character uh, set uh, as a map. So we've got a character map essentially. So we've got uh, the binary representation of space. Um, we've got binary representation of the bang symbol and quotes and so on, like all the, the entire lot. Um, now, I'm sure that one or two of you in the comments are going to be like, oh, well, you could have represented this in binary and you could have had it in uh, nested lists and all this kind of jazz. Um, honestly, if you read my GitHub, I actually tried this uh, to begin with. My first thought was, oh, we'll just encode this as a binary font and um, we'll just go and like iterate over it, pull the data out, print the font, and Bob's your uncle, and we're all good. Um, it didn't actually work very, very well. Um, I found that MicroPython, I don't know if there's a limitation or it's something I'm not just, you know, just not sort of seeing here, um, but it wasn't working very well. So strings in a list it was, right? So yeah, this is kind of wasteful in terms of space. Um, I think there's actually plenty of space for messing around with in MicroPython here, so not too exciting. Uh, but yeah, so I've taken the time to encode every single character. Um, some of these are longer than others because they have descenders. Uh, so G has a tail, right? A uh, little descender at the bottom. And uh, J has a tail, P, Q, Y all have tails, so they're, they're longer um, sort of uh, binary representations of the, of the data. Um, it's a couple of helper functions built in here. Um, I've got print chart, um, whose job is to just print a single character. Um, that's all it does. 
and I've got Delchar, um, which obviously del deletes this character, and then we've got print string, uh, which is just a helper function that just sends the data to print char and assembles it into a string, and that's, that's the job done. Um, really, really straightforward. If I want to print a character, I can just call it, fire in a let, you know, pass in a letter as a parameter, an X position, a Y position, a size. Um, as I've said, there's two sizes of font for this. Um, Delchar, we're to do the same thing again. Um, all, the, all that Delchar does is draw a rectangle, black rectangle. Um, so obviously if you want to, if you've got a blue screen, uh, you probably want to edit this function and draw a blue rectangle, right? Because that would be kind of sensible. Uh, but again, it takes X pos, Y pos, and size. So we're just going to draw a rectangle over the character um, and it's away. Uh, print string, as I've said, um, just calls print char. Um, it does a little, uh, little bit of calculation on how to space out the fonts and so on, but that's all it does. Um, so a few tests underneath here. Um, this is, you know, all, all on GitHub. So it, there's just some examples, some use, use cases. Um, so I've put the string hello world into a, a variable called test one. Um, we'll set the pen to whatever color we want it to be and then go and call print string. Um, so we'll feed in um, our string. Um, I want it position zero, zero, so top left. Um, as, and then pick a size, so size two, um, for example. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So there's a bunch of tests here. If we want to see them in size one, which is utterly minuscule, um, we can just come in here and change all these to ones, and then we can see how phenomenally uh, phenomenally tiny um, this font is. Um, if we just use the default, um, very very small. But if you're young and you've got bright eyes and all the rest of it and you're like well i want the tiniest font in the world because i want to put a lot of text on there and um, you can sure as hell go right ahead and do that um or hit stop and then start and then watch it print out an absolutely minuscule font um I'll, i'm sure you'll agree this is very very tiny right um it's perfectly usable i mean it depends what it is that you want to do if you're going to have a little fresnel lens in front of there so, so you can magnify the display or whatever um perfectly fine um, but honestly, um, I, I think for most purposes, you're probably going to want to use a size 2 font. But, you know, it's, it's there. Um, let's hit undo. I want to see um, size 2 again. I don't know what I did there. Awesome. So we'll stop and start. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Um, yep, so we've got uppercase and lowercase, doesn't really matter. Um, if I want to change this string up here to anything I like, um, I should be able to do that and it will handle it just fine. And I'll just stop and start, Tony. Awesome, now it says anything I like, absolutely fantastic. Uh, we could change this to Leslie's Lab, right? So probably, probably the quickest video in the world, right? Um, awesome, um, absolutely fantastic. So yeah, you know, like I said, the, the whole idea, the sort of um, motivation for me doing this was well, I, wanna, I wanna build a microcontroller that does something useful, you know, like uh, drive stepper motors or whatever. I want some text on the screen. Uh, don't like Pimeroni's font, uh, roll your own. Um, back to the fonts and how this stuff works. Um, it, it, it was a pretty pretty interesting thing. This this kind of stuff um, I've done, you know, like back in the day when I've been uh, building like 8085 and Z80 computers, and I want to display characters to a screen, um, doing this sort of thing, just just sort of uh, um, you know store, storing the characters as a, an, an array of data, right, and then printing those things out. Um, so yeah, this this harks back to the good old days when we used to do things right. Uh, print char is pretty interesting, um, I suppose how it works. Um, yeah, we, we actually get the value of the character. Um, so say I pass it, um, I don't know, say I sp hit space. Um, space as an ASCII character is 32. Um, so when we start reading through this list, um, we actually, so, you know, lists and arrays start at zero. We actually sort of offset that and say, well, if I've just, you know, press the space key, I want to be reading the zeroth element out of the, out of the list. And if I've, if I've pressed, um, bank, the, you know, ex exclamation point or bang or whatever you want to call it, um, which is 33, I'll go and get the first element out of the array and so on. Um, so we just pull this data out of the array. Um, and for each one of these, um, you know, say I've pressed uh, tilde, right? Um, for each one of these, pull these strings out, um, we split them up into a list of, of fives, yeah, because it's a five by seven character. Um, so this is what this line does here, and just strips all that data out um, and assembles it into a, into a list of um, you know, five by X. So it should be five by seven, except some of them have descenders, so maybe five by nine or five by 10 or whatever, right? Um, and then just iterate over the data, draw the pixels. 
um, that's it. So, you know, for every bit in a row, assuming a bit is a one, um, we'll just draw it, right? So if I've got five ones, it'll just go dot, 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 dot. Yeah, um, that's it. Um, as for sizes, if we push them in, all that happens is, is we draw two dots horizontally and two dots vertically for every single dot. So we double the size of the, the font that we print. That's, that's it in a nutshell. Um, it's pretty cool how it works, I guess. Um, but yeah, um, I'm sure that one or two of you guys who are watching this are all like, yeah, well, Les, um, your fonts are awful um, and I don't like them either, right? And you want to design your own fonts. Um, well, I've got you back once again, right? Obviously, you know, typing all this stuff out is a bit of a pain in the backside and nobody wants to do that. Um, so also on GitHub, um, let's go on back there. Um, it does say that in the source file somewhere, da, 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 it says in source um, is the source code um, for this little program. You know, just basically copy and paste the, the car map and the helper functions as screen initialization and stuff. Just copy it into your code, rattle it up the top, and then just call it whenever you like, right? Uh, if you want to make your own fonts, um, I've uploaded this. Um, this is an Excel spreadsheet. Um, ooh, I know it's Excel, uh, whatever. It's got a macro in it, so you'll need to make sure that macros are enabled. Um, it's called bin to hex um, XLSM. Um, I used this back in the day when I was designing fonts for like the Z80 computer and stuff. Um, it's pretty, pretty useful. Um, we'll take a look at that spreadsheet um, if it'll load. Um, it's quite a big um, spreadsheet and there are macros in this and it's kind of a pain in the backside. I um, just wanted to show you guys um, in, these, in these columns, you know, B through K, uh, is it B through K? C through J, right? Is um, pixels, right? Um, so we've got our little character here. So here's our character representation for the letter A. And these, although it doesn't work very well on the Raspberry Pi, because uh, it's a little bit slow, um, if I click on a pixel, um, it will turn a pixel on. Um, and in principle, if I click on a pixel again, it should toggle it back off. Um, it's a little bit how you're doing on um, Raspberry Pi, it has to be said. I don't know what its game is. Um, it seems to work perfectly well on Windows. <laughs> Um, but yeah, all right, it's because I need to click away. That's kind of irritating. Right, so I can toggle these things on and off. But if you watch very, very carefully the data at the bottom there, um, let's count in. We've got a string, um, you know, binary representation of this, of this letter A, right? Um, over here is a one, uh, so it goes zero, zero, one. If I toggle that off, um, we'll see that the one has now disappeared. So what this actually does is it spits out our binary data for us. So you could use this to design all of your characters in your character set. Um, if you don't like the way my A's look and my B's look and my C's look and all that kind of jazz, you can just go in there and redefine them all um, and do with it, you know, whatever you like. So I've just scooched the bottom of my spreadsheet here and drawn a little smiley face um, because why not? So let's grab the, uh, the data that it spat out for us. Um, let's copy that to the clipboard and we'll come in here and we'll replace uh, the number zero. Why not? Let's just pick one. So there it is. Um, the, the hope is now that our number zero is actually replaced with little smiley faces. Um, so we'll stop and scooch down to the bottom of the code and we'll replace our top uh, string that we wrote anything I, li uh, anything I like with. Um, we'll replace it with, I don't know, hello. And then some smiley faces, because why not, right? Um, we'll hit run and we'll see what it spits out for us. Awesome. Um, so we've got hello and a little row of smileys. Um, absolutely fantastic. You know, we could, you could do anything you wanted with this. You know, you could, if you wanted to build like a miniature card game or something, it would be easy um, to draw uh, little hearts and little diamonds and little clubs and stuff like that, right? Um, it would be very, very easy just to, you know, go into the spreadsheet there. Um, just nice as you like, rattle out some new characters uh, and away you go. If you wanted to extend this, uh, I mean, currently, you know, the function itself only supports like five by seven, um, but you could extend this. Um, you'd, you'd have to alter the function a little bit and then you'd have to be mindful about the rest of your characters. Um, so in here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we've got eight columns, right? So you could do like eight by 16 um, would be something that you could easily, easily do. Um, we could come into the display chart function wherever it is. Um, yeah, and wherever we see the number five, we'd have to replace it with eight because we'd be doing it eight. Um, you might have to pay a little bit of attention um, in, you know, with, uh, with Delshar as well because we're deleting five width characters. You'd want to change that to eight, you know, so you'd have to do a little bit of faffing around with this. Um, but yeah, in principle, you should be able to draw whatever it is that you want um, on the Raspberry Pi Pico display in a, in a nice clear font that's usable for everybody.
Thanks for watching this episode of Les's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.